Hi, everyone. Welcome back. We're on uh, week five or lesson five of our wonderful book, Spiritual Power Tools. And today's lesson is coming from uh, a spiritual power tool. And that's spiritual power tool number three, which is on page 43. It's the spiritual thermometer. So I'm going to uh, bring that thermometer up for us so we can all see it. And there it is. Here it is. Oh, so it's not working. There we go. There we go. Goodness gracious. Um, you can see very clearly here, at least it was very evident to me, that there is a above the line behavior and there's a below the line behavior. And this didn't come from the spiritual uh, practices, the 15 commitments of uh, conscious leaders that we deal with so much on Sundays. But rather, this is a, a wonderful illustration of how we can so easily go below the line and what it takes to go above the line. Now, we want to live our lives above the line, but that doesn't always happen for us. And you can see that when we're stuck in emotions, we're at a five. We're at a five on this thermometer. And we want to be on a, a, a 10. All right, that, yep, we want to be on a 10 as much as we can because the universe works with us. There's just less turmoil in our lives. It just is a squeaky clean machine when we can be a 10 because then you're living in the now and you're very present to what's going on. And so when we are below the line, we're not only stuck in emotions, but we say things to ourselves that are limited self, or we say it out loud, or we say it to about somebody else, you know, um, I'm not good enough. I'll never amount to anything. Uh, I don't have enough. I'm broke. I'm always going to be broke. My family did this to me. I have no, these are all limiting selves. These are things that we believe about ourselves, which is not true, but we've picked them up as being truth. And so that thermometer of angst is ignited. And that puts us below the line. It puts us in that one to one to four and a half, five state. When we're in drama, when we're in fear, when we want to be right, our ego kicks in, you know, and these are the times when that happens, at least if we can pause and understand that I'm in that state of mind, that's the critical part. An example, very simple example, you get an email, you're watching a wonderful TV show with your spouse, you're having a nice evening, you read this email and it agitates you right? You go, oh, bloody. And you start to rattle off a response that is probably below the line. If you could pause at that moment and not respond, wait till the next day if you can, and then look at it with the presence and clear thinking, your response will be very different. So do not make decisions and do not take action when you are in that state of mind that puts you below that thermometer, when you're stuck on your emotions, when you don't feel good about yourself, you know? And so I love at the very bottom of this diagram, it says, forgiveness, release, quiet the mind, surrender. Wow, what a wonderful practice. Because where is the forgiveness needed? Now, forgiveness is, is a recognition that I did something that I don't want to do again and I forgive myself for going to that state of mind. And I want to now go to a different state of mind. So we release it and we surrender. It happened. Now it's time for me to move on. Now, we can't be flippant about that. Because if we've done something that causes harm to another person, we may need to do forgiveness with that person. I'm so sorry that I, I lashed out at you. I was overreacting. I shouldn't have done that to you. I'm so sorry. And can we replay it? Can we do it again? Where I can be more on my uh, 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 awareness that I want to be more present and clear thinking. Mostly the person will forgive you. You know, obviously, unless there's, you know, uh, some real harm that's been done. And I hope that isn't the case. But that's what she's talking about. Forgiveness, release and surrender. This is a great illustration, this, this spiritual thermometer. I'm, I'm thinking about putting it up 
at the church wall. I think it's wonderful. Get an artist to make it for me and put it up. I think it's a great illustration that sometimes we can get stuck, but boy, when we're prayed up, you know, when we've taken the necessary time to be consciously aware of what we're feeling, you know, we can move above the line and have a peace of mind and discernment. We can seek out the wisdom and guidance of God when there's a question of, of what it is we need to do. We can have clear thinking. It's a huge uh, opening and an awareness factor for us that when we can have clear thinking, the guidance and ideas are and it's easier to focus. It's easier for us to do what's placed in front of us to do with with a full, uh, with our faculties all in place. And especially when we're on a 10 on the Richter scale, on that thermometer, we are present. We are in that moment. It's an awesome feeling. And I know that we've all felt that way at times. Now, how do we replicate it? How do we stay out of that? stuck in an emotional state below the line and come up and be present in the now. How does that happen? So I'm gonna leave you with some questions for discussion. Some of this requires a little bit of a, uh, doing on your part. But the first question is, write about when you have been below the line in some area of your life and shifted to above the line behavior as related to the spiritual thermometer on page 43. The second question is, what practice have you or do you need to put into play in your daily living to keep yourself in the now, in the present moment? That number 10. And the last one is, when did you first realize that your behavior was below the line and how did you react to this discovery? Share that with your group, certainly within your journaling. And uh, I wish you only good things and I'll see you with the next lesson. Godspeed.